Okay, today we're going to create a simple photo composite. I'll introduce you to another selection tool as well as teach you how to refine the edge of a selection. We'll also use the gradient tool and still be kind of constructing masks as we have in the last couple of weeks. Okay, uh, what I'm working with is a canvas that is 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 dpi, so a 10 by 10. And we can see in my layers panel that we have a background layer here. It is currently locked, so I'm going to unlock it by clicking on the lock one time. When I unlock it, it will rename my layer, and I'm going to keep my layer called background. Currently my background is white. What I'm going to do is use my gradient tool to change the background color. Now the gradient tool will uh, create a gradient from point to point onto the layer that you're, you're working on. Now my gradient right now is black and white, so I'm going to change the color. If I look at my control panel at the top of my workspace, I can see a swatch in the upper left corner that's black and white. That swatch is pulling the colors from my foreground and background. And if I look at the flyout menu for the swatches for gradients, that swatch is available in the far upper left corner, and it will change based on my foreground and background colors. Just next to that swatch, I have five icons that indicate different shapes of gradients. We have a linear gradient that changes across one line or one path, a radial gradient that radiates around a center point, and then we have some other gradients here that will create different kinds of looks depending on what you're working on. Notice that every time I draw these gradients, they replace the previous gradient. That's because right now I'm working in a normal mode at 100% opacity. Both of my colors are completely opaque, so you can't see through them, and therefore they overwrite all of the previous pixels. I'm going to change my gradient to a different color. I know that I'm going to be working with a ukulele composite, and it's going to have a beach theme. So I'm going to select colors that reference that. Maybe blues and yellows, or just different shades of blue. I'm just going to select a light blue and a dark blue. Once I have my colors selected, I'm going to go to my radial gradient icon. That's the second icon up there in the control panel defining the shape of the gradient. and I'm going to click and drag on my canvas to create a radial gradient. The way radial gradients work is if I click, that creates my center point, and wherever I drag and release my mouse is going to be where the radial shape ends. So it radiates along the path that you see. Okay. If you want a shortcut key to access this gradient tool in the future, G is your shortcut key, G for gradient. Now that we have our background created, I'm going to place a file. I'll go up to my file menu, select place linked, I'm going to find my file. I'm going to start by placing my ukulele image. When I place it, I'll see my transform box. Here I'm going to rotate my image, scale it down, remember to constrain your proportions 
hold shift while dragging a corner in or out. When I'm happy with my transformation, I can press return to set my image. Now that we have this ukulele in place, what I want to do is remove the white around the instrument. To do that, I'm going to use my quick selection tool. W is your shortcut key for the quick selection tool, and in the double column toolbar, you can find it in the second column, second row. It looks like a paintbrush with a dotted ellipse behind it. So what I'll do is I'll take my ellipse, I'm sorry, not ellipse, I'm sorry, I'll take my quick selection tool, and I'm going to make sure that the brush size is large enough that I can select things associated with the instrument, but not so big that I'm not going to be able to um, paint within the lines of the ukulele. So right now, mine's set to 125 pixels for the brush size. And if I take a look at the rest of this control panel for my quick selection, I have a new selection, add to selection, and subtract from selection option. I'm going to use the add to selection. <coughs> Excuse me. Using the add to selection means that I can paint and continuously add to a selection that I've already created. So I'm going to click and drag over my instrument. I'm just painting as though I'm painting with a paintbrush. And I'll click and drag over this left side. And to get these knobs, I'll make my brush smaller. I'm using the left bracket on my keyboard. That's right next to your P. And I'm just going to click right over these to add to my selection. Now, if you over-select, for instance, you accidentally paint into this white space, don't fret. Simply go up to that control panel, select the subtract option, and paint over the area you want to remove. Once I'm happy with my selection, I can take a look at it without the background by selecting my Refine Edge option. The button to refine an edge appears in the control panel for your quick selection tool. You can also find it in your select menu. When I have my refine edge dialog box visible, I can change my view to on black or black and white, marching ants. I'm going to do black. That gives me a pretty good idea of what I'm working with. Actually, I'll do transparent. Okay, so you can change all of these and you can get a pretty good idea of what the shape is that your selection has created. Now, I did notice a few things wrong with my selection. Black, it's very, very obvious that I, I have some problems with my selection um, kind of around my guitar. Okay, so you can change your view mode at any time. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my smart radius and I'm going to expand my radius outward to see if this can tidy up the edge of my ukulele. Smart radius is essentially what this is being called, edge detection. It's taking this small parameter of pixels and looking for an edge. So essentially seeking out contrast in either color or tone. If I wanted to paint in a little bit more of a refinement, I could take my Refine Radius tool and paint where I'd like it to, to do a little bit more calculating of my edge. Okay, so I'll just do some brush strokes over some areas that I think are problematic. That looks a lot better. And remember, these selections will be used for masks, so if you want to fix anything at a later time, 
you always can. Okay, so that looks pretty good, much better than before. If you're still having a little bit of trouble, you can explore the adjust edge and see if maybe smoothing out the edge will give you a little bit of a better shape. Feathering is probably not what you want for something like this because it's so sharp, but know that feather will kind of give it this weird soft glow, okay? It's, it essentially creates like a gradient around the selection, okay? And shifting edge literally does that. It will shift inside of the shape that you've defined or outside of the shape that you've defined. Okay, so I'm going to say OK. And now that I have this lovely selection, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask. And the layer mask icon can be found at the bottom of your layer panel as your third icon from the left side. It looks like a white rectangle with a black circle. When I click on that Add Layer Mask icon, I should see my layer mask loaded with the same shape as my selection. You'll also see that the background gets cut out. And that's the beauty of That's the beauty of selections and masks. If you have any problems with your mask, for instance, I'm seeing this little, this little cutout here in my ukulele, uh, just make sure that that mask is selected. Take your brush tool, B is your shortcut key, and just paint it away. So I'm going to paint with a white paintbrush to make that go away. Once I have that edited, I'm pretty happy with the result. So let's move on and start adding some additional images. The first image I'm going to be adding is an image of a beach, and it's going to sit on the face of the ukulele. So I'm going to go up to my File menu, select Place Linked, and I'm going to find my picture of a sunset, place it over the ukulele, And at this point, I'll rename it, and I want it to appear, the sunset, I want that to appear inside of the same shape as my ukulele. So I'm going to select the mask of my ukulele layer, hold Option, and click and drag up to the sunset layer. Option, click, drag, release, always copies things. Now that I've copied this, what I'll do is I'll take that mask and I'm going to do a little bit of brush stroking to kind of make it this image blend into my ukulele. So I'm going to take a black paintbrush. X will toggle between the black and white colors of your foreground and background. Make sure that the mask of the sunset is selected. And I'm just going to do a really quick brush stroke right here at the neck so that the image is blended in a little bit better. Once I do that, I'll go to my Layers panel and I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer so that it can reveal the ukulele texture below. Right now we're seeing an opaque sunset, and we cannot see the detail of the original ukulele image. To change the blending mode, make sure that the layer you want to edit is selected. Go to the top of your Layers panel, where it says Normal. Click on the white arrow, and here you get a list of blend options. I'm going to select Hard Light, but you're free to explore blends in different ways. Just know that blend modes allow you to literally blend the current layer with any visible layers below it using algorithms that uh, calculate highlights, shadows, midtones, and color. I'm going to select hard light 
and now I can suddenly see the sound hole and the strings of my ukulele. If I still think hard light is too strong, I could also bring down the opacity of that image as well. So know that you have blend mode and opacity as options for your layer settings. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out that sound hole so that the sunset's not landing in it. And I'm going to do that with a paintbrush with a pretty high hardness. That's your first setting in your control panel here. And I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm just going to hover over this um, sound hole. I have my mask for my sunset selected. My paintbrush is black and I'll just click right here and notice what happens. It sort of cuts out the sunset from that image. Okay, now that we have that in place, what we're going to do is add another image. I'm going to go to File, Place, Linked, I'm going to select my hibiscus flower. I'll scale this down and rotate it. Again, remember to hold shift while scaling so you can constrain your proportions. Press return. And at this point, I'll use my quick selection tool to select my flower. I can, again, use that refine edge to just make sure it looks pretty good, and it does. It looks nice and sharp. Okay, so it doesn't look like it needs any, any editing, but if it does need editing, you're free to select that smart radius, do maybe a little bit of smoothing. All right, I'm going to say okay. I will, with that selection loaded, so you want to see those marching ants, selection loaded, Make sure your layer is selected. I'm going to navigate down to the bottom of my layers panel and add another layer mask. All right, so that should just load the shape of my selection into that layer mask. It looks great. And what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to make a copy of this flower layer. So I'll hold down Option, click and drag this layer down. When I release my mouse, I should see a new copy. And with that in place, I will uh, hit Command T to access my transform box. I can rotate this flower, move it, and when I'm happy, I'll press return. I'll, I'll use my move tool for this. V is your shortcut key for move. Okay. And once I have these flowers in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an effect. So I'll select this top flower, navigate down to the bottom of my layers panel where I see the icon called FX. FX for FX. I will click on that. I'll get a drop down menu and I'm going to select drop shadow. Now drop shadow tends to have a black color associated with it. It's using a darkening blend mode called multiply and you can see it appear when I set it. Now I've used Photoshop before on my computer. So it is pulling from my last setting. All right, so yours might look slightly different. If I bring my opacity up to 100%, you can see what opacity does. But I'm going to leave it pretty low, around 50% to 40%. And I'm going to keep my size pretty wide so it's subtle. Do this. So right now, my size is at 101 pixels. My opacity is at 33%. Okay? So I just like 
effects to be subtle. I don't want them to look too strong or obvious. Okay, They just add a little bit of depth to the image. Once I'm happy with my drop shadow, by the way, the angle is the angle of light. So you can change the direction that the light's landing on the image. But once you set everything up, say OK. You'll see drop shadow appear in your layers panel if you have a newer version of Photoshop. And what I'll do is to save some time, I'm just going to option, click, drag, and release that drop shadow onto the second layer so that they both have drop shadows associated with them. Again, option, click, drag, release will allow you to move things or copy them. All right, so now that we have the composite put together, we're going to add one more image, file, place linked, and this one's going to be the, the wave. I will place this. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is not going to be a technical masking that we're going to have to do. I'll press return to set the scale of this. Okay. What I'll do is I'm going to add a layer mask to this wave layer. Again, that layer mask icon is the white rectangle black circle at the bottom of your layers panel. I'm going to rearrange this wave so it's right in front of my background layer. I will select the mask of the wave layer. And I'm just going to do a really quick mask using a regular paintbrush. I'll start by getting rid of these rigid edges. Make my hardness 0%. Start at 50% for our opacity. And I'm just going to slowly but surely mask this wave so that it blends into the background image. Oops, I did not mean to make it that strong. It was supposed to go this way. So we'll blend it into the background image. And remember, when you're painting with the paintbrush, every click is a brush stroke. So don't just scribble. Click for each brush stroke and sweep across. Um, this is a good example of when you might want to consider trying a blending mode, especially if you have a background color that's maybe not blue. And uh, so the wave might have a little trouble blending in. So right now I have my wave at normal, but I could see what it looks like with a darkening blending mode or a linear burn. It's kind of interesting, really dark. Uh, screen, well, that's kind of nice, okay? So you can kind of explore these. Some will give you better results than others. Overlay is usually pretty nice for blending things in. And once you're happy with that, you have a composite. Now keep in mind that this is an example of a composite where we're creating one around an object. The object is the ukulele. The images I've placed into it are all images associated with its origins. And because the ukulele is associated with Hawaii, I chose the hibiscus flower, which is famous in Hawaii, uh, a sunset, and a wave. So together, we're starting to develop a tiny bit of concept to support the image that you're creating. As you explore Photoshop, start thinking about how you can create concepts or meanings by choosing images that are associated to one another through the objects and subject matter in the photographs. Once you're happy with your composite, go to File, Save As, and save it, last name, 
first name, week two, exercise two. Make sure that the format is a JPEG and upload it to Blackboard. I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to sharing other demos with you. Thank you.